Today, there's about $500 billion of forest risk commodities value produced every year. About 200 billion of those in tropical rainforest countries. So transforming those commodities to deforestation free commodities is actually a big transformation. There is a role for uh, the private sector in that. TFA 2020 was created to respond to basically commitments made by the Consumer Goods Forum, which is about 400 large companies involved in consumer goods, so retailers and producers of consumer goods, made commitments responding to the identification of supply chain commodities as big drivers of deforestation uh, to basically get rid of deforestation in four key commodities, so-called forest risk commodities, palm oil, beef, soy and paper and pulp. There's a need for government at all levels to work with civil society, to work with the private sector, to move towards the transformation, how rural development is done, how the commodities are produced and how they're grown. This is not something that private sector can do alone. It's not something that government can do alone. It's not something that civil society can do alone. Basically, there is a need for not only breaking the silos, but creating models of public-private collaboration, potentially public-private partnerships even, but let's just stick to collaboration, interaction, and creating a shared vision that gets behind a different model of rural development, because that's what really what we're talking about. Last year we had, I think, three very big uh, um, outcomes, so three very important meetings that brought two very important outcomes. One was the meeting on development finance in Addis Ababa, then we had the signing of the Sustainable Development Goals, and then of course we had the Paris Agreement. The Paris Agreement brought forward, I think, the aspiration of staying well below two degrees, one and a half degrees, put forests in the text of the agreement, and if you backtrack what needs to happen to actually stay below one and a half degrees, or anyways have reasonable chance to stay below two degrees, there's no way we can do that without a land use sector that becomes climate positive. So that's very important. But I think that the SDG, uh, the, the Sustainable Development Goals, are possibly even more important. Because in the end of the various wedges that we have in the climate policy arena, the land use one is the one that probably has the biggest implications for the other sustainable development goals. I think that this is about integrated land use planning. The forests have a big role. Uh, it's uh, interestingly some of the recent data from, from Indonesia about the drivers of deforestation show logging as being one of the biggest drivers and actually higher than palm oil. Um, we, but we need to put it in the context of a rural development and land use planning. There is a big role for forests, for the correct management of forests and for forest conservation, which are not the same thing, right? Uh, to play a role in a landscape to achieve a, what is a landscape level sustainable development pathway. I think that we have two uh, very strong trends that will support the transformation of supply chains. One is the increased transparency of what happens in the, in the forest and what happens in the rural environment. I think that's truly transformational. We will be able to trace back deforestation and allocate it to specific supply chains in a way that we've never been able to do before. When I started working in this space, it was impossible even to know exactly how much deforestation there was, let alone what it was. Today we have basically almost instant information on major uh, forest canopy losses. That's, we haven't quite processed what that means, and we're still trying to figure out how we use that kind of information, but I think that will be quite transformational.